Thank you, Amos, for leading those good songs. It's very pro- apropos for the, tonight's lesson. As we think about the only way, of course, the only way for what? To what? The only way to heaven. As we think about no tears in heaven, that is certainly the hope of all who, who uh, love the coming of the Lord, who, who uh, trust in God and the promises that he's given. That, uh, that, uh, that hope for us in heaven for everlasting life and that we certainly do look for the for that. As we think about the only way, our text first comes from John chapter 14, particularly verse 6, and where Jesus said to his disciples, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only access point through which one can find God, approach God, and be with God, be in his fellowship. You know, Jesus is the way to God, the Father. To know the way, one must first know the destination. Jesus, of course, is the way, but the destination is what? Heaven, the Father, fellowship with the Father. So, so that was actually uh, out of which came the discussion and the reason for Jesus making the statement that he did. Back in 1976, I'm sure many of us remember then that those days, that uh, Diana Ross, you might remember that name, she sang a song that became very popular do you know where you're going to? Regardless of the, the poor grammar, the song is actually very uh, uh, thought-provoking. As, as, I, as the opening uh, uh, words are, do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? That's, that's a very appropriate question for all to ask. Where is my final destination? What is this life leading to for me? As we consider... Uh, John chapter 14, you recall this is a record of, written by John the Apostle of the events that took place the, when Jesus, the night that Jesus was betrayed, the night that he instituted the Lord's Supper, his supper. And, and uh, it was that night he became, became very plain, well, in a manner of speaking, and if, of things he was letting his disciples know, encouraging them for what they should expect and the promises that they would enjoy. As we consider the scene, the evening of the Last Supper, Jesus was relating some very important information to them that was to that was of the utmost importance. It was very important what he was relating to. And so as he as he begins in in chapter uh, 14, verse 1, of course he didn't speak in chapters, we know that. And when John uh, recorded this for us, uh, the recorded his gospel account, it was not divided into chapters nor verses. It was just it was one long account. But it was but as we see here, for quick references, we have our chapters and verses. So as we open up in chapter 14, he, he, Jesus is talking to his disciples, says, Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Of course, you consider the background of these, these men being Jews. They were well acquainted with the law of Moses and the requirements of it, and that it was God who gave it to them through Moses and uh, their faith in God, of course, came from their learning of the law of Moses and everything about that. So uh, certainly they would believe in God. So he says, believe, ye believe in God, believe also in me. You know, Jesus was, uh, 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 they understood him to be, be the Messiah. And you recall from Matthew uh, chapter 16 when he asked the question of his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, some think you're, you're uh, uh, John the Baptist, some think you're uh, Elijah, one of the other prophets. And, and, and so he says, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And Peter spoke up, thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Of course, he was praised. Peter was praised for that confession of Jesus, that he was Son of God. And so it was understood uh, that, that, I mean, his, that his identity would be known to them. And so that in their believing in God, they should also believe in Jesus who is the Christ. So believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So he's encouraging them, giving the reassurance that what they were about to, I say about to, what they were go- their lives are going to entail, that there's going to be a reward uh, following after that so that they would have a place that they would expect. You know, they, they were called out of this world and just as the world had rejected Christ, the, he was warning them that the world was going to reject them, them too, because they were not of this, not of the world. They were not part of the world anymore. And so, 
as he was encouraging them that, they, that he was going to prepare a place, a dwelling place for them, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And this is what drew the question by Thomas. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? So his, his perception wasn't yet about Jesus talking about the heavenly realm. Jesus was talking about that place in heaven that he was preparing for his disciples, and Thomas was not thinking in these terms yet. Quite possibly, as many of that day were thinking that Jesus would, would reign as, a, as an earthly king, much like David or Solomon, and return the glory of those days to Israel as they were hoping for. But the fact is, the kingdom of God that was going to come, that they were preaching, was at hand, that they should repent of that, was not a kingdom of this world. As he told Pilate, and Pilate was interviewing him, questioning him about who he was, what he's all about, when the, when the, when the Jews had brought the, the, Jesus to, to be crucified, that was their goal, to have him executed. And when, when uh, Pilate was asking him, asking about, so you're the kingdom of Jews? Of course, this could have been a great concern that he would be, would be an usurper to Caesar and would draw a great following in Palestine among all the Jews who would try to rout out and, and drive out the Romans. This could be very serious. And so uh, Pilate asked him, so you're king of the Jews? He said, yes, but my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. Of course, that was not happening. Um, but as, as they may have been looking for that worldly kingdom, earthly kingdom, and so when Thomas was asking, we don't know where you're going. What, do you, what is this all about? You know, and, and how do we get there? You know, we don't know where you're going. We don't know how to get there. Well, Jesus clarified some more things. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's, that's the gist of, the, of the, the night, that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Now, his answer was far bigger than the question. Thomas' was, question was immediately where you're going and immediately how do we get there? You know, he wasn't looking at, he was looking for an earthly location. And, and, and so as Jesus said, you know, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me was a far bigger and more important answer to the question, where are you going? And, and as he gave it, related that to Thomas, I am the way to the Father. I'm the truth, truth that would lead us to the Father, and the life, everlasting life, only comes through Jesus Christ. You know, Christ is the way to uh, um, where we're going. As, as we consider, do you know where you're going? As Thomas said unto him, we know not whither thou goest, and whither we can know the way. He said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. So he's talking about a more important destination that Thomas may have been thinking about. Heaven heaven okay so Christ is the way to the Father in various ways let's consider Christ is the way to the knowledge of God you know we understand that faith comes with a hearing hearing by the Word of God right Romans 10 17 in order to understand and believe in God and have faith in God we must hear the truth about God that's what Christ came to bring us Christ speaks to us today. In Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. In the old days, God spoke to, the, the, to mankind through the prophets, the prophets of, of, that we read of in the uh, Old Testament. But today, what about today? As we consider verse 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he hath made the worlds, that's a mouthful, but we see that cr we, we hear Christ. When, when uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the mountaintop, and he was transfigured before them, their very eyes, they saw him in glory and talking to Moses and Elijah. And uh, as he was glorified in that uh, manifestation, it uh, became clear when the voice came from the clouds, they were very afraid. And the voice came from the clouds from above, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear ye Him. Hear ye Him. So we are to hear Christ today. The, and so, who is the authority today but Christ? 
Jesus Christ is the authority today. When we look back at the Old Testament, certainly the Old Testament scriptures came from God. They were inspired by God. And the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That uh, certainly is the word of God. But as regards the new will and testament, the new will and testament, the last will and testament, the new testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's the authority we have today. The authority has been changed. No longer it is, is it Moses, but now it is Christ and his law. Um, Matthew seven twenty eight, regarding Jesus and his bringing us the truth, uh, bringing us the knowledge of God. In seven, Matthew seven twenty eight, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, it was towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount, and the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And so his teaching itself and how he present things, he taught with authority as he revealed to them what the law of Moses really intended and not what they had been hearing uh, uh, over all their lives. John 8, 31, <clears throat> Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Um, as we look at the term free, it has various connotations. One aspect is that free from sin, the law of sin and death. We're set free from the consequences of the law of sin and death. We know the, what the law of sin and death is. If we sin, justice is that we die. You know, uh, uh, Romans 6, 23 says, for the, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Christ is the way to the knowledge of God. Christ is the way to the favor of God. If we enjoy the favor in God, Christ is the way to the grace of God of God. The grace of God has appeared to all men. In Titus 2.11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that's pretty important. It's this grace that brings us salvation, hath appeared to all men. What is that grace? What has appeared to all men? Well, we know that those Christians in the early days, uh, as they, uh, that uh, having obeyed the gospel, they were receiving the grace of God. They received the special favor of God because of their faith in Christ and their obedience to him. Certainly they, that, that, that grace in the, that, uh, that favor was revealed when the law was changed and they were enjoying a, uh, that grace of God. But also consider that Jesus Christ himself is that grace that God sent. It, it, it was the manifestation. It's the revelation of that, that uh, 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 <clears throat> the revelation of that grace to us, to mankind, so that Jesus himself was a physical manifestation of that grace which has appeared to all men. Um, um, but the, the, the grace, of, and the, that grace of God, what does that do? It teaches us. This is what draws me to the, the uh, um, looking at this passage as, when he's talking about the grace of God being, having been revealed to all men, I think he's talking about Jesus Christ is that grace because what does it do? It teaches us, Titus 2.12, teaching us that denying the ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Grace teaches us. It teaches us not to continue in sin. Remember Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The, the power of God's grace overcoming the 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 depth of sin and the power of sin, God's grace is far superior to whatever sin is, uh, uh, has, is in, in one's life. Having repented of that sin, turned to God and obeyed, obeyed the commands, and finding that forgiveness, the grace of God far exceeds the, whatever sins may have, caused one, may have brought one to the depth of, his, uh, of that, that bottom of the barrel, as we might, might think of. But... Uh, that grace doesn't teach us to continue in sin. Rather, that grace teaches us not to sin. It teaches us to turn away from sin. As we look at this, that teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's what this grace is that Paul was writing about to Titus. We go back to John 8.31, that they, they would know the truth. We can know the truth. As Jesus said that to those Jews who believe in him, if you continue my word, you shall be ye are my disciples indeed. You really are my disciples if you continue my word. And ye shall know the truth. And that's what the grace teaches us. Truth. 
Um, so Christ is the way to favor, the favor of God. Christ is the way to the grace of God. Christ is the way to the Father's fellowship. Um, you know, as we think about, in our, our, our goal is to go to heaven. And we all know that that's the hope that's in us. Our desire is to go to heaven, to be with God, to be with our Savior Jesus Christ, to be with all the brethren and all the heavenly hosts. That's what we're looking forward to that day when we shall leave, depart from this earth and our bodies will be changed to be a heavenly body so they will not be corruptible. They will not decay and grow old. Rather, they will be everlasting bodies. And so that is the hope that's in us and our desire to be in heaven. But there's more to it than that. It's not merely making it to heaven. It's a fellowship with the creation of the creator of this world, I should say. It's a fellowship. And the uh, Christ is a way into that fellowship with God. You know, John's desire in his writing to this first epistle was to draw more people in order to have fellowship with him and with Christ and with the Father. As we consider the opening uh, verses of, of First John, that he expresses that desire that in their knowledge of him that they would have the fellowship with the Father. What does it mean to have fellowship? You know, we think about fellowship dinners, and we've discussed this a little bit before, that we think about, we, we ha sometimes we get together and we have to eat, we call it a fellowship dinner, okay? Certainly, as we gather together, we enjoy one another's company, and we enjoy the, 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 the conversation and just being together. But there's more to that, being brethren in Christ, fellow Christians. We enjoy the, the company and the fellowship, the fellowship being we are in uh, 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 alignment. We are purpose together with our purpose. We have the same goals and we enjoy a fellowship um, uh, more than just good company. We're brethren. We have a tie that binds. There's a song, you're familiar with that. Blessed be the tie that binds. That's a, that, that expresses that kind of bond, bond that we have in love and in joining in the purpose of, of Christi the Christian walk. And so we enjoy the fellowship with the brethren, but as John is describing it, as he, he writes in 1 John 1, 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. John, being an eyewitness of Jesus Christ and hearing the, word, the, the teachings of Christ and seeing him day by day behave, and so as he saw it, they beheld it, they observed it, and so that's what they declare unto us. That, so it says, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. Speaking of the, the, the apostles. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So to have fellowship with the Father, it's, it is being in line with him. It's, it's a It's a friendship that, that transcends all of other friendships. It is a, a, a father-child relationship that, that uh, supersedes and, tra and, and goes beyond our, our, our uh, father-son relationships here on the earth. It is uh, having communion with God. Can you imagine that? Having communion, fellowship with God. And so to have that fellowship is, is simple, thinking about it. And it's simple in concept, but difficult in practice, isn't it? To have this fellowship, it's simple. All you have to do is what? Walk in the light. As, as John writes in, in verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So all we have to do is walk in the light. What does that mean? Well, it means a lot, doesn't it? So in concept, it's simple, but in practice, it can be difficult. But that, that motivating factor, our hope for heaven, the heavenly realm, will, will, will uh, drive us to uh, keep on, keeping on, walking in the faith. So that fellowship is had from what the grace of God teaches us. To deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So right now, right now, we can live godly. We can live soberly in the sense of having a serious mind about life and the consequences of our choices. 
and we can live righteously and godly in this present world. Titus 2.12. So Christ is the way to the Father's presence and his home. The last point I want to make. As we've looked so far, Christ is the way to the knowledge of God. Christ is the way to favor, the favor of God. Christ is the way to the Father's fellowship. And Christ is the way to the Father's presence and home. It's heaven that we're talking about. In John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It was only through Jesus Christ. As we consider that song that I mentioned earlier, you know, do you know where you're going to? Recall, do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know? Do you get what you're hoping for? When you look behind you, there's no open doors. What are you hoping for? Do you know? You see, as we go forward in time, living out our lives, when we look back at where we, we have been, there's no going back. You see, we're not the same person that we were then. But life goes on and goes on forward as the song continues. You think about this. Now, some of these lyrics don't quite apply, but I'd like to sh bring some things out regarding this. As once we were standing still in time, Chasing the fantasies and feeling all nice. You knew how I love you, but my spirit was free. Laughing at the questions that you once asked of me. Now, looking back at all we've had, we let so many dreams just slip through our hands. Why must we wait so long before we see? How sad the answers to those questions can be. Why must we wait so long before we see? Why? How sad the answer to these questions can be. You know, one can go through his whole life and hearing the gospel and realizing he spent his life living for self or, or driving toward a certain goal and realizing the end is, is nowhere. It's leading nowhere. You might say it's vanity of vanities as, as the wise preacher wrote in Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities. All things are vanity under the sun. All things that are in the sun. It's the point that he was making that if everything that we're hoping for, looking for, is in this life that we can see right now, it's all vanity. It's a waste of effort, a waste of time, because in the end, it's all gone. The only hope that anyone would have would be, as he concluded in, in uh, chapter 12, verse 13, is to obey God. That's, that's the saddest, that's the, that is the reward, that is the value in this life upon this earth. So, how long before we wake up and perceive the truth? Will we have time before we must go? When I mean when, when we must go, when we depart this body and go on to the world that, path, that follows this life here. Will we have time? So as, once again, do you get what you're hoping for? When you look behind you, there's no open doors. What are you hoping for? Do you know? So what is your hope? And will that hope be realized on the path you are currently walking? Do you know? Remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. If you would find life, then answer his call. Believe, confess, Christ Repent of your sins and be baptized because, as he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16, 16. So the question then is, do we know? Do we know where we're going to? Do we get what we're hoping for? What are we hoping for? Do we know? The answers really are in Christ Jesus. The answers to life, real life indeed. And the answers is the answers to the call of Christ and obedience to him as we have faith in him. Confess our faith that Jesus is the Son of God and repenting of our sins. And as he, was com he commanded us to do, we must be baptized for the remission of sins. Therein we will be forgiven of, of our sins, added to his body, having fellowship with other Christians, having fellowship with those whose hope is in heaven, 
and their goal is heaven, but only through Jesus Christ. If you need to respond to the gospel invitation tonight, then come forward as we stand and as we sing.